All right. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to section two of the um, track one, the morning session for Multicon 2020. And um, this session will be having um, Joseph Kayla. Um, Joseph Kayla will be talking to us about ideas to your next e-commerce campaign. So um, Joseph Kayla is the CTO at Friendly, and uh, he has been working with Multic for the last four years. Welcome, Joe. Joe? Joy is good. Hey, hey, okay, Toby. Great. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is going to be live now, which is lots of fun. So I apologize in advance if there are some glitches. I um, I created slides. I'm not going to do a live demo this time. Uh, this this uh, presentation will be in general about theory and some solutions we do, and more like giving you ideas, really what you can do with e-commerce uh, and Motic together. As you know, and probably you experienced yourself that Motic is not cut out for e-commerce because it's more like, uh, uh, it's more like uh, creating campaigns, more like segments based on, on one uh, dimensional uh, um, field. So you can't really store big uh, purchase histories. You can't, really store uh, lots of uh, information about about revenue, about frequency and so on. But there are some workarounds and I would like to talk about that today a little bit. Um, like Toby said, I am coming from a company which also provides uh, solutions for our, for our clients regarding e-commerce as well. I'm not going to try to sell you anything today. So it will be a, a speech really just about the, the landscape and how we approach uh, e-commerce companies, how we talk to them, how we show them uh, uh, guidance uh, with Modic. Okay, so let's talk about first about the, the strategy. Um, so when we look at a company and we start to work together, we always try to look at them. So what type of data is available? What type of data they already have? what we can capture with Modic, what segments we can we can build on that, which is very important because based on the segments, you can create meaningful campaigns. So you have to have the right data. With that, you have to build the, the right segments. And with that, you can you can build the, the, the campaigns, which will impact your business. And can a marketer do this alone? This is always the question. And usually no, because Modic is not cut out for the end user at this point. I think at least it has a high learning curve. So we usually see the situation that, you know, we show, so this is Modic, this is what you can do, but then they will need some support until they learn how to use Modic. Um, there is a lot of information and we are learning from this information as well. It's lots of info on the web. Uh, I also uh, encourage you to, to contribute contribute. So please help out with the knowledge base, help out with, with YouTube videos. Uh, you can join the forum. Um, we're discussing ideas there all the time or on the Slack. I'm also trying to help anyone who has questions. But please also, if you have a great idea, just go there, share it in the forum. Uh, or if you have read the scripts or plugins, then please put it on GitHub, share it there so we can all learn and grow. Um, so when a marketer comes to us, they usually already send some newsletters. And with Modic, we can show them how to send targeted newsletters, customize the content. They were maybe tracking opens, but with Modic, you can also track visits as well. So you can create really cool dynamic segments. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, of course, abandoned cart reminders, that's like a default for everyone. You can do that with Modic as well. Uh, we saw today already a great presentation about how to do it in details. I will just uh, refer you to another plugin, no affiliation. You can take a look. It's a lot harder <laughs> than, the, than the Make the Better um, uh, plugin. So it's a lot harder to, to, uh, to manage, but I really like that plugin as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about Bopis as well, which is buy online and pick up in the store. And we actually having some success with that, but I'm gonna cover that a little bit later. So someone comes to us also, they use a pop-up maybe, um, but they usually use a third-party builder. So with Modic, you have the focus items, you can 
uh, have almost equivalent uh, experience for the customer with the uh, with the focus item builder. And it's really cool that you have all the tools in one place. And maybe you store your list of customers somewhere with Modic, you can store it right there. If you can attach the right tags and, and the right uh, custom fields to a customer, then you can do some amazing stuff. So when we talk to, to our clients, usually we are like, okay, so what data you have? Where can we start? And we always trying to start small. This is super important. If you are an agency yourself, you probably experienced that, that, you know, the customer hears what you can do and they're right away trying to build a starship. Uh, no need. We usually start with some something small like basic retention campaign. Uh, someone used to be a customer, didn't purchase for 30 days. So we send out an email, please buy something uh, via email or text. And then you can grow this later. Okay, so where do you get your data from? Um, the data, like I said, it's super important. Uh, you need to retrieve, you need to store the data to be able to create good segments. And with good segments, you can create great campaigns. So the data is really the basic of everything. So some data you already have because Modic captures a bunch of data, what you can use from the last date active to, till really dwelling time. Uh, if you know Modic, you know all this information already. Um, you can use it all in a smart way if you organize uh, your segments properly. So there is a lot of things um, what you can push into Modic. And about this presentation, um, I didn't know if, if I'm going to do something like uh, for advanced or intermediate or beginner. So it's going to be mixed. <laughs> there will be some stuff which only says something for the for the advanced users. And maybe I say a lot of new things for people who, who are just sorry to use uh, Modic itself. So uh, data can be pushed in via webhooks. Um, just it's it's really simple. You can just take a piece of PHP code, couple of lines, and then push in the data. And the cool thing is that, and why I'm showing this because sometimes you are, you know, uh, I see comments in the forum that okay, how can I integrate this and that and create a plugin two thousand dollars? Bam! You don't need that. You can find a coder who can do simple, safe connection with with your solution, is that a web shop or is that a, a one-time checkout page or whatever, you can connect to Modic and you can just API in the data. Very simple, couple of lines of code, and it, it works really, really well. On my website, you can find a blog post about that. Okay, you can also use the MTCGS for that. So if you are allowing, uh, you see it up here, you're allowing this little earth icon that's super important. You need that for, um, to have this uh, uh, this uh, field public publicly updatable from the MTCGS, so that means uh, if you want to update it by a page visit or by um, any other JavaScript um, managed content, you can push in any information. This is a, a code from the Modic blog. It's golden stuff, really. I use it a lot. Uh, you can. Uh, capture this email address and then push it in. Um, and uh, you can turn the unknown customers, the unknown visitors into known uh, customers uh, between the two systems which you connect with the MTCGS. Okay, there's some really cool stuff. Also, if you know a little bit like uh, WooCommerce uh, coding uh, on uh, Robert Wentz website, there is a really cool uh, article about how to uh, uh, modify WooCommerce to to right away uh, retrieve information. Of course, you can have a plugin. This is the Votic plugin. It's, I will refer to this a couple of times. Um, I really like this plugin. It's super simple. Uh, once you understand, before that, super complicated. So <laughs> let me let me show you how it works. Actually, it's, it's really nice if you don't know it. So let's say this is here the product you have. I called it Joy is the brand. These are here the switches you're going to use. SO7, PR8, OH8, and so on. And then there is the actual SKU here, this Modic 1. So what happens is that if someone orders this product and their status is canceled, then CA88, then on the form number 88 in your Modic, the information will be pushed in. And all the information what you really need, from shipping method to abandoned car, everything what you need, you can, you can have with Votic. 
Um, so I will I will cover this a little bit later, how to create an abandoned uh, card campaign with this, but uh, it's a free way, so you can use it. You don't have to pay for this, but you have to give the effort yourself. And here's the thing, if you look for a ready solution, I think the make, make, make the better uh, uh, plugin is a lot better for that. Uh, this one requires your activity, but it's for free and it can do more than just, you know, certain couple of predefined uh, actions. So if you want full control, this is a very good free plugin for you. So we, we got all the, we can get this, all this data in, we can have it in the registration page or when someone converts or from WooCommerce or Magento or whatever in the background, uh, or you can do it on page visits. It's up to you. These are the, the, the actions, the, the, the data transfers, what happening based on some kind of action. We can have also synchronization. We do this in different places. One of them is, for example, uh, we're using Unicenter by a couple of customers. Unicenter is an open source post system, which means you know you go to the to the local uh, uh, dairy store or whatever to the uh, the cake shop, and then you buy some kind of product. They punch it in. It's a it's a cash register basically, and then something happens. Now they also deal with loyalty. And by the loyalty, they also understand the customer's email address. So when you use the loyalty card based on the email address, your purchase is registered in Unicenter. So with just a simple query and then the previously showed API, every night we have a data synchronization where we push all the data back into Modic. So we have the brick and mortar stores, uh, online purchase data in Modic up to date every day so someone was in the store then we know it and based on that you know they're just like a one one uh, uh source basically in the in the data of the modic uh, system you can also connect it with web shop systems this uh this once a day uh, sync typically when you want to see uh deliveries made to certain customers and you want to update in modic that the delivery has been made to that customer let's do something let's ask for a review so what you are thinking here is usually the, the, the daily batch of purchases. You can also in Unicenter, we are uh, capturing this information if the customer usually comes in the morning or in the evening, or uh, somebody has to do a pickup, then we can understand if someone already picked up the product by transferring the system, ba uh, the information back to the web shop, uh, from the web shop system to Marik. And if someone didn't pick up the products yet, then we're sending a reminder about that. Okay, so let's let's uh, cover a couple of the the. Please don't be scared; it will be fast. Uh, let's let's cover a couple of the example campaigns and how all this comes together uh, at the end. So you can like if you have first time visitors, there's not too many things you can do because you don't have the email address yet. So your main focus will be getting the email address no matter what. And actually our clients love it when we tell them that, you know, this is the first thing you can do right away without reviewing all your data, without understanding how your company works, without understanding what you're selling, we can do this thing. Uh, we can do this action, try to capture the email address. So for unknown customers, by using a segment for unknown customers and creating a dynamic content, which is calling a, a, a focus item, you can do great pop-up campaigns, give me your email address. Uh, or you can uh, push them to a new page as a, a customer who has not uh, interacted with your brand yet. You can you you need to educate them about yourself. You have to tell them who you are. You have to and walk trust. So it's very important that you share more information. And you can do is do you do this by by pushing them to another page. I also urge you or or recommend you to save the referral link and make sure it's never you know to a safe place in the profile so it's not overwritten. Uh, because you can use this later for statistical purposes. So actually the first campaign for us very often is saving the referral, referral link. Okay. Uh, when someone comes back, uh, what we, what we always recommend that you show the recognition, like you would go in a store 
and the shop assistant is smiling at you and welcome back. You know, that's really nice. And you can do the same thing in a shop. So you can actually say, welcome back. Also, you can say, welcome back and give me your email. It <laughs> depends how pushy you are. Uh, but creating the feeling of recognition, I think it's super important. You can also uh, save the products uh, for later, like have such a pop-up or a link where you can collect the emails. You can say that, yeah, we have more stuff for you. Just give me your email. Okay, curious visitors. Who are the curious visitors? Um, so those are the people who have not made any purchase yet. And you can target them uh, with, with more information. So they are the ones who are looking at the website. Maybe they have high dwelling times. And this is, again, something you can you can filter for uh, in Modic because it's possible to, to record the time spent in, seg in, in filters. So you can create segments uh, based on that. Somebody who is coming back all the time but not purchasing. And here the importance is that the has purchased information. So you need to get it somehow, either via API or one of the previous methods that I mentioned. But once you get it, then you can build such a meaningful campaign. So somebody who comes to your website all the time, comes back frequently, spends lots of time, but has not made a purchase. So you need to break down the obstacles, handle the objections, the unspoken objections, why they haven't bought anything yet. Well, they don't know you, so you have to talk about yourself. You have to make sure that they know you can have returns. You can you have a guarantee. Show them reviews of uh, of uh, from other customers. Or you can also create social proof. You can do this also with the focus item. Uh, or you can uh, create a feeling of uh, fear of missing out by count with countdowns and, and other options. Indecisive buyers are the ones who were your customers, but they have not purchased for a while. And now these segments, which I'm giving you examples, these are not either or. Someone can be this and that as well. Um, so it's possible that you have some overlap in your campaigns. In that case, what you can do is you can exclude a campaign, uh, you can exclude a segment or even a campaign in your filters because there is such an option in Mari. So people who frequently visit a certain product, you can, of course, measure that. You can set URL visit for certain product more than this and this. I will show it to you in a moment. Um, and again, a very importance of the purchase uh, date. You need to save that when the last purchase happened. This is why it's very important when we are taking the offline sales, we always push it in. And actually, it's really cool. It's synchronized with the online sales. So we know that this person either bought offline or bought online, but we had some kind of interaction. This person is active, let's say, last 30 days. Okay, so um, the indecisive buyers, it's a very easy tool. What we usually do, push some discounts and... Um, and it's, it usually helps to convince them. Idle customers, these are the people who have not purchased for a long time. They haven't been with us, but before they were buyers. So you need to back them back because they left because of something. So you can ask for the feedback. And then you will understand why they why they left. Hopefully it's not a bad thing. It's just maybe they forgot about you. You can offer also cross-sell based on the products, what they purchased. And I will give you some tips how to do that in a moment. You can also share news about old products. The point is to get the conversation going, get the interaction going, because with Modic, you are not spamming people, you are building meaningful relationship. And nicely share the news about products or ask questions is the way to do it. You can, of course, always offer a discount. Where are you? We need your money, 50% come back. <clears throat> So in general, um, this came up before this RFM uh, um, by the previous presentation. And also I wanted to talk about this because this is really cool stuff. Um, so with certain plugins, you can manage that automatically, um, but you can also create your own rules to manage these, uh, the, the RFM segments. Like I mentioned before, there are the idle customers who are not purchasing, they are here and 
um, I will talk a little bit more about the other other segments. You can actually, if you know the when somebody purchased, how often this 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 person is purchasing usually, and when was the last time, uh, uh, and how much they spent. Uh, with this, you can pretty much recreate the whole RFM. Uh, uh, table and address them properly. So let's go back to the loyal customers. So this is the bread and butter of your business. Um, they have purchased recently something, they're coming back all the time, and maybe you even use the stage loyal for them. So you can do a lot of things, and these, these can be absolutely automated campaigns, something what you set up. Uh, and it's okay that you have lots of campaigns. Because if you have lots of campaigns, you will send lots of different emails, not a lots of emails, but lots of different emails, which in general will help your inboxing. I will talk about this a little bit more in the afternoon in an emailing talk or evening. Uh, but in general, if you are sending really customized, really targeted in lots of these information, then you will have a better inboxing on the long run. So there's a bunch of things that you can offer. It's really up to, up to your business. Coupon lovers. This is something we started to um, experiment with. And we found that there is, a, there is crazy stuff going on on the internet. Like you are posting a, a coupon and there are Facebook groups just all around that. And they right away sharing the info. Um, so if you get the... the you find your gate, like your, your connection, your, your customer who is a member of this group, they will share this coupon and they can get a flock of other coupon lovers uh, to your site and they will make purchases. But you have to do this smart. So uh, one way is that we actually isolated these people and we only sending the coupons to them not to lose revenue on other uh, customers who otherwise, you know, would pay full price. But this is very cool stuff. So we are tagging the people who are using coupons and uh, who are using a lot. We are tagging differently. And, and this is happening by a sync, actually, a custom sync, what we built. So you can also watch the cycles, like how often they're ready to buy, and you can test it yourself and try to narrow it down that they're buying more and more often and try to raise the coupon value as high as possible. Uh, you, of course, have to understand your boundaries, but that's where your sweet spot is. First-time buyers are one of my favorites because everybody's first-time buyer when they're buying first time, duh. But the cool stuff is that when, when you have a first time buyer, you think you're, you're done, your job is done. It's really not done because that person will forget you. Maybe you are creating a for, uh, unforgettable experience. They will still forget you because, you know, they're buying so many things on the internet and you are just one of them. So you need to keep them coming back. Now you have other tools because you can say, yeah, you purchased by us. We love you for that. Do it again. So you can strengthen your brand. You can make sure that they're buying again and they keep coming back. So we target them actually differently. Uh, first time buyers have uh, such a campaign when we are trying to ask for their opinion and, uh, and try to offer them some discounts or some incentives to do the second purchase that, you know, we will be in their head. Uh, items by uh, target by items purchase. This is what I was saying. It, I made actually a little mistake here. So this is the this is the segment here. So let's say you ordered products. Let's say product order contains let's say a Fuchs capacitor, and then less than minus thirty days. I don't know if you guys know this switch. Uh, I've seen it in the forums that some people are not aware of that. So this is thirty days ago, and this is refreshing all the time. Because less than 30 days is, for example, less than minus 30 days is minus 31 days, which is 31 days in the past. So it's a little bit maybe complicated to wrap your head around. But if you want to check something like somebody did something in the last 30 days, then you say time greater or equal than minus 30 days. That's the last 30 days. Okay, maybe I already wasted too much time on this. So um, anyway... If you save the products ordered, 
So like here, cotonandi is plutonium flux capacitor and the dolorin. If you save this already ordered, uh, this, this ordered information, you save it in the, in the profile and order time, then you can already target for that. So you can say, I want to see who has purchased this in a certain time. Uh, can you do this when you have 2,000 items? Probably not. Um, but if you have, let's say, up to 50, it's, it's still it still makes sense to, to do it, especially if you're selling products which you need to resell over and over again. Uh, target by items viewed. So you can run this in the background. It takes actually lots of lots of time, and I suggest you to exclude people where you don't have the email address yet. You're looking for certain pages visited. And for the most web shops, you see this in the URL bar. So you will be able to see that um, that uh, uh, someone has looked for a product because in the URL, you have the product name. Uh, and you should all, anyway, for other reasons, you should use a web shop which, you can, which, which can do this. Um, so you can collect this information. It's really cool because it's saved in Modic, so you can do it res retrospectively as well. Visited URL, URL count, and then you pass the order time, and then you see people who visited certain pages long time ago and didn't buy anything. Here, you can actually do it as well that order time greater than minus 30 days. So it's in the past 30 days, in other ways. And what I usually do, I, I add the tag to these people. I don't run a campaign from here. I add the tag. I say, this person is interested in this and this because they checked out many times. Um, for B2B companies, if you have a price list and someone is checking out your price list all the time, but not a customer, in other, in modic language to say, visited URL contains slash price list slash and visited URL account greater than five and stage not equal customer, then you need to reach out to them. So that's what we always suggest to B2B companies. Okay. Uh, shipping base. This is my favorite. We do this now a lot. Uh, COVID is not a nice thing. People are looking to spend as few time as possible in the shop, but they like to save us money, save, save themselves money. So they choose a shop pickup if it's possible. And this, of course, works only with website or companies which also have a brick and mortar shop. But they order a shopping method where they pick up in the store, so you know they will be there. And you can address that. You can send them a, an update. So for example, we do it this way. If your spending is this and this much, then you get a certain coupon, which is an incentive for you to buy more when you pick up the product in the store. And this is something what people cannot say no for. We have over 50% conversion rate on this one. And it's really good. It's really sad that we, we have the ability to use it because of the because of the um, the pandemic, but it really works well from the marketing point of view. Abandoned cart. And now I'm coming back to the Vurik example. I will not do the whole setup. You can, uh, you know, I'm ready to help you in the forums if needed, or maybe I'll write a blog post about it. But the idea is that WooCommerce will post the information. Uh, okay, so let's start here. So first of all, you set up your brand, brand name, you create all the switches, which are these, for example, this is for abandoned and this is for new order. And then your SKU. So you set up this configuration, order comes in. And if the order is abandoned, which means it's uh, failed or pending, then it goes on to your form number 88. If someone fills out the form number 88, you add the tag, abandoned, bump. Make the filter, someone has the abandoned, wait some time, you will set this in your campaign. You can have the, the product name and uh, the product ID, which you can use in your template. And if the person is purchasing, then you are calling for purchase. This is completed. This is, I think, account created and no idea. So when this one is filled out, then you are removing the abandoned tag, you are adding the new tag, so they will disqualify from this campaign and the abandoned cart won't be sent out. This is the super easiest free version of uh, abandoned cart management. And of course, it's a little bit quick and dirty, but if you like to 
tinker with Modic and why you wouldn't because you are here. Uh, you, 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 are, you are into Modic, obviously you, you wouldn't be uh, uh, participating, then this is something I, I recommend to play around with. And I think that's it. And I hope that my sound was fine. Otherwise, I was just making a clone of myself for 31 minutes. So you guys have any questions? All right, um, that was a wonderful session, um, Julie. Um, that was great. Okay, so um, I'll be sharing my screen now so that we can be able to ask questions. So we already got two questions. All right, so just a moment, let me share my screen. Yeah. All right, so um, um, the first question we have here is from Marcos, and uh, Marcos is trying to know if it's um, GDPR compliant to send mails to abandoned cats. Well, it's up to you what you are making them accept in the in the pop-ups or whatever you manage it's that's that's actually a really good question you should you should check it yourself I'm not hundred percent sure um, but you know with GDPR there is a couple of things what what it required the one re requirement is and this is no legal advice at, at, at any point <laughs> but you should make sure that the person understands how you're using their data they have the right to be forgotten and they have to be able to know what data you are collecting from them. If you manage that good on your website, then you can have uh, abandoned cart mailing, which is the GDPR compliant. Okay, in, great. In my opinion. All right, so we have another question from Radu, and um, Radu is asking if we can have access to the presentation. So which one, the me uh, talking or the... Uh, the presentation itself is on Prezi, which is actually I'm sharing with everyone. Uh, so, but I think that Ruth said that it will be available. Uh, the okay. videos will be available for all of us. Okay, great. So what, the presentation too will be available on Prezi for anybody to have access to it, right? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so we have another question from Ono. Ono is saying, um, great talk. Um, then he's asking, do you use some sort of tech methodology um, to build your strategy? It's a very good question. That's actually the, the hardest thing because you are going to someone's house and you are organizing things around. So it's like you have to understand that business first as a consultant. You have to... Um, and you have to give them advice. So I think you can build a strategy if you have seen other companies doing something. And that's the benefit of working together with the consultant, which by the way, we don't do, we, we do not do. We we create, uh, we actually selling Modic as service. Uh, we are not doing the consulting out of the box, uh, but we work with a lot of clients and we help them anyway. So what we usually do is we try to understand this this, uh, these three things, the Trinity, the one is the data, what data they have, what data is typical for their business, how can we change it into meaningful segments, which can be translated into campaigns. So I usually start from the campaign part, I sit down with the marketing manager and say, if, you're, if you would do it yourself by hand, like you person sit down, what would you do? Like a B2B sales guy would say, well, I would get my list and, you know, call people. Okay, so let's automate that. What else you would do? Well, if someone is not answering me, then I would be uh, writing them again. Okay, great. We can do that. Multi can do that. Let's, let's see. Opened it? Yes. Didn't answer? Do this. Opened? Yes. Did answer? Do that. So we, we sometimes go down into these levels and I think that's the best for e-commerce stores. We start from the zero like it would be brick and mortar store. Customer comes in, what do you do? Well, I say, hello. Well, you see my presentation, I also said, say hello to your customers. If you know them, then make sure that they understand. So try to take a real real life example and then try to apply it to Modic. 
that's the methodology we, we use. Um, yeah, I think it's worth another speech one day. All right, so, so um, Joe, we have, okay. We have quite yeah, a number right. of questions for you. Um, okay. the, so, so that we can be able to answer all of them. So another question from Inda, um, he said, I, I understand each e-commerce portal has some plugins for marketing or drip, drip campaign or out bringing to multi is benefits. Um, yeah. I understand. I don't know if you get that question, if you can read it okay. on your screen. Question. I think, and please uh, correct me if this is not what you're asking, that most of these solutions have already some kind of drip functionality. I think you have to go beyond drip. And if you committed to store all your information in one place and you are in control of your website, which is maybe not your sales page, which is not your web shop. Let's say you're doing lots of SEO content marketing. So you having a WordPress site, which is getting the customers, you push them to the site, then you know all your data will be recorded by Moric. And maybe you have the same thing with the Shopify. The Shopify is just an extension, then boom, you have the data in two places. So I recommend to have it in one place and have Moric track everything. Yes, you can have a, a paid plugins, which do almost that. But if you want to do it in one place, then I suggest you do it with Moric. You can have a amazing tracking with Moric. And I think Moric is created by programmers to marketers. So marketers are like, what? Programmers are like, you can do everything. So if we are all here, then I think that we should do this. We can do everything approach. Okay, great. So um, we have another question from Joanna. Okay, so Joanna is asking if this session is recorded and can you rewatch it or download yeah. it? Okay, great. Yeah. So if you listen to the, let me answer that. Uh, if you listen to the keynote from um, from the introduction that Chin, um, AK gave when the conference started, um, he did mention that the the videos for each of the sessions will be made available, and then that will be communicated. Um, to everyone who registered for this um, Multicon 2020. Okay, great. Um, the next question we have here is saying, um, that is from Baco. Um, do you know of Abadot Cat integration for OpenCat? Unfortunately, I'm not really good with OpenCat, but when you can, so just let's, let's, let's forget that you have any, any cards. What is an abandoned card? Abandoned card is, um, Somebody visited the, the thank you page. So then you know that person ordered. So everyone else who didn't visit the thank you page, but visited the cart page qualifies for abandoned cart. So you can start from that. I'm sure they can send webhooks as well. And you can capture webhooks yourself. Uh, I have a post about that on my blog. It was also in this presentation. Data comes in, you make sense of it. API 18 into Modic. And you're pretty much done. So I don't know out of the box, but I think it's possible. Okay, great. So um, another question from Peony. Um, we are a media comp publication and uh, we don't have any product. Does this mean we can actually tag our customers based on unlimited tags and show them articles based on those? So for media public, we have one client and um, we're not doing it this way because you will go crazy. <laughs> if, you, if you're a media publication and you have like thousand pages, then you will go nuts organizing that. We broke them down into categories and if you can somehow uh, smuggle in the category into the URL, then you can organize interest by that. That's one way. The other way is that you can have the special tracking script on each page saying that, remember in my presentation, I had that part with the JavaScript and I was passing the, the, the email. There's no reason why you can pass the email only. You can also pass the topic of that page. You just call it in PHP that the topic should be inserted there. And then the topic will be updated in the customer's interest custom field. I don't know if that makes sense. And I'm happy that uh, Radu is saying that there is a plugin to integrate open card. That's really cool. I didn't know. So, but you know, there's a plugin for everything. So I was kind of hoping that there is. All right. So before we go, uh, before you go, Joy, uh, let me also ask you this question. Um, mm -hmm. 
can the can this showcase solution be used with uh, okay we've talked about that can it be used with Shopify? so uh, Shopify, uh what well, yeah so about shopify there is uh there is one plugin. the the oof, what was the name of the plugin shop Motify is the plugin. It's a really great plugin. You should check it out. I've been using it a lot. I think it's like $20 a month or maybe 30, but it gives you all the data you need. It's really, really good. I can only recommend that. We use it by many clients. All right. So can you also push um, in the abandon cart direct link into your Mautic with Wootic? Uh, so uh, that does not work because you're not saving uh, out of the box. So you need to modify. So that's why the make a better solution is superior. Uh, Vutic cannot do that at this point, but that would be really nice. You can have a product ID. So maybe you can bring back the person to the product. Okay. 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 So um, you mentioned about Maltic and a brick and mortar store connections. All right. Yeah. What type of other data are you getting from offline stores and um, what you can use in multi campaign yeah so for example this particular client we have uh three different uh, locations in budapest so they are uh they have uh you know the city is divided into different areas so people will not likely to go to one store to the other and the shopping centers where they locate it have different uh promotion times so when one shopping center has a promotion we can target those customers who only shop in certain store. And since we're getting that data, it's super easy. So we tag them that this is shop number one, this is shop number two, that's shop number three. So we can do that. The other thing is the, the most likely shop by us by shopping time time of the day. So we can, we can create campaigns based on that as well. We know that someone is likely to come in later. We hope that's after work. So we start to target them at three o'clock and say that only today. On the way home, spend all your money by us. All right. So we have one last question from Inda. And um, Inda is asking, can you use include list, that is segment, as well as exclude list from your from campaigns? So what I do is, for example, if there's a situation that you want to say, um, I want to target anyone who is not a loyal customer. Uh, you can do that. But maybe you want to include five other segments. I mean, exclude five other segments, not just one stage, for example. Then you can put that in as exclude in a segment. So you can say this segment is anyone who is not in another segment. And you can do the same in a campaign that for a campaign that uh, you want to include anyone who is not a member of a campaign. And this is actually really tricky because campaign membership is uh, X file <laughs> in, in Mautic because you go into the campaign, you go through the campaign, you're still member of the campaign, but nothing is being, um, uh, nothing is being uh, uh, launched for you. So if you are a member of a campaign, but you are adding items at the end of the campaign, you will not send those out anymore. Those will be not triggered if the, if the person went to the end, but still a member of a campaign. So you have to either restart the campaign or you have to create another campaign. Yeah, I think I just confused everyone, but uh, the idea is that you, you should watch it when you're excluding campaigns. <laughs> All right. All right, Joy. So um, wonderful session. And... Um... Um, we're able to cover up all the questions, and um, I'm sure a lot of people want to catch up with you in the networking session. So you may just want to bump in there and see if one or two people might be interested in talking more about um, the topic you just discussed about today. All right. So, so thank you, Toby. Bye. Thanks. See ya.